Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 171. This episode is with martial artist and stunt performer Ross Constam. Apart from working on some of the coolest stuff out there, he's also just a really cool dude. I had such a great time hanging out with him. We talked about how he started training in martial arts at seven years old, then going on to compete on the NASCAR circuit, teaching himself tricking, and then becoming the seventh person ever to land the triple corkscrew, how he got into stunts, the intricacies of screen fighting, getting to double Spider-Man for the Insomniac games, playing a bunch of characters on The Mandalorian, and so much more. He also gives great advice for anyone looking to get into stunts that you won't want to miss. Ross is awesome. So let's just jump right into this. Without further ado, please enjoy this episode of the Interesting Podcast, number 171, with Ross Constam. Theme song time. I got a dog. He may or may not bark at some gardeners. That's okay. Those are my favorite like uh, Easter eggs within the episodes is who has a dog and who doesn't. Mine is (laughs) mine is sleeping. He's a what's what's yours? He's a Chihuahua Corgi. Oh, perfect mix. Yeah, he's adorable. He's like 15 pounds, small enough to look like a chihuahua but he's still got this little corgi waddle oh i love it got a little corgi head yeah he's cute. what's his name uh casper Ooh, good one good yeah. one how old is he 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 turned six in october nice i love dogs dude me too i would have a whole house full of dogs yeah. if, I, <laughs> if i didn't travel so much and i had a, a job around the corner or something i would just mm-hmm. have a whole, a whole house full of dogs yeah I've got a I've got a pug named Kubo. Oh, cool! And he is a he's a year and a half. Awesome. So he's he's got that crazy amount of energy, but I'm just oh, so in yeah. love with him that I'm like, oh, it's yeah. okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta gotta take him out, and get a, get the energy out. Oh, dude, it's I like, I guess I just didn't know because when you grow up, if you have dogs and stuff, your parents handle right. so much of that, and you're like, oh, we'll just get a dog. It's fine. And then when you actually get one, you're like, oh, this is like a lot, it's right. like a child. Oh, yeah. And especially like if you have someone like growing up, I had I had a dog, two dogs and, um, you know, you kind of share the responsibility. So if you didn't mm-hmm. take them out at night, someone else probably did. So, you right. Know, you know, but when you got to take care of them yourself, you're like, oh, wait. I'm yeah. laying in bed, <laughs> but he's probably got to go to the bathroom still. So, you know, yeah. Yeah, we're at this point. He's such a mama's boy and he loves my wife. And sometimes he will only go out with her. So she'll be like, oh, he fine. needs to go out. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. I'll take him out. And he'll just stare at her. And I'm like, no, let, we're, we're, we're going, Kubo. And he just will not break <laughs> eye contact with her. And I was like, you're going to have to take him out. It's it's his. Look at him. Yeah, no, no I can't say no. <laughs> <laughs> but dude, I was so excited that you agreed to talk to me because we have a lot of mutual friends. About oh, yeah. uh, Darren Ross is a really close friend of mine. I Love with Darren. Him a bunch. And dude, stunt people are my people. Hell I, yeah, man. They're just great. So I was really excited that you decided. Yeah, to no, I'm them. I'm honored, man. This of is course. Awesome. Of course. So you're you're in LA right now. I am, yes. I assume you're not from LA. I am not from LA, no. Where are you from originally? It's rare to find someone that was born and raised here, right? True. So, True. It's funny because my my girlfriend uh was born and raised uh in the valley here oh and really so the way she she views la is so different sure you know? <laughs> uh i had some friends coming into town well like two weeks ago and it was their first time ever to the west coast oh cool and so they wanted to do the whole tourist uh of course you know just the whole deal so i was a tourist for a week and it was so funny like my girlfriend's like don't they, they want to see the stars oh my god don't, don't <laughs> Don't take him to Hollywood for too long. Like, let him sure. see it and go do something else. Cause, you know, right. <laughs> but they got to see it because they never. Of course. It. It's all part of it. All where part where of are you it. from originally? Originally, I'm from the East Coast. I'm from Northern Virginia. So, what? Right. I'm from right North Carolina. Washington, D.C. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Not too far. Then all yeah, of Virginia. I grew up, 
sort of the suburbs of Washington, D.C. My mom used to commute into D.C. and my dad worked around D.C. So nice. That's nice. My, uh, yeah, that's my spot. You did the full one side to the other. Totally. Yeah. Coast to coast. There you go. Yeah, I got to I got to get back there for the holidays, too. So I'm in the it's so funny. The holidays came up so fast. Yeah. I'm like, whoa. OK. Yeah. Gotta go, uh, and everyone's traveling again. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Give or take. So, yeah, it's, it's a different process this year. It is. And it's weird. The last two years feel like six months. We're in this yeah, strange so, reality. So weird. Yeah. And, and this year, particularly because I was I was so busy this year. I, I was on a job from the beginning of February to September. Mm -hmm. And we worked like six days a week. And so Dude. that whole chunk of my year is just a blur. Yeah. <laughs> like, a total blur. And so if the year felt super short, I was like, you know, cause I, I finished up and I was like, Whoa, it's September. Yeah. You know, so. that's the way to go though. I find a lot of people when they're like, Oh, it's a process. If you're thinking about it as a process, you're not making progress. You just put your head down, do the work. And then you look right. up and you're like, Oh, right. here and, we are. And, 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 and you look back and you, it shows how focused and how, yeah involved you are you know when totally especially totally. For, for for our business is like when you're on a job that's your life for yeah a specific amount of time sure sure at least it's cool stuff you're busy with that's the key oh you know <laughs> no it's funny too because like you know when you're working those those long long hours you know you get tired because you're a human being even yeah though the, uh, the industry doesn't yeah necessarily no. <laughs> recognize that sometimes yeah. but, uh thanks but you know, six days a week and you're tired and, and, and then you're every, every time I get to that point where I'm like, Oh, I'm tired. I'm like, wait, but where am I going to work today? You know, yeah. you, know you kind of remind yourself and, and bring yourself back to the ground for a second. There you go. And exciting. in your case, literally. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Yeah. And what some days are crazier than others. You know. I bet that's kind of what keeps it interesting though. You know, oh, you never know what it's going to be. It's that artist's life. Oh, totally. So I know a lot of stunt people typically have like a gymnastics or a martial arts background. And I've seen your AKA video. <laughs> Dude, so crisp. The, te <laughs> the technique, like I did martial arts for a few years and I've been training Yido for a year now. And I grew up loving all that stuff. But you can yeah. really see when someone has their kata fine tuned. And your stuff is nuts from oh, way so. back then. Thank you. I mean, when did you start? It's, it's funny. Cause I was, uh, I was thinking about like, I was like, oh, I'm gonna do a podcast. I gotta think about like what I'm going to talk about. And, stuff. <laughs> and it's just crazy. I, you know, I, I realized, you know, martial arts has just been my life forever. Like sure. my whole entire life, just around martial arts. Um, so that that's my background. I grew up, I started martial arts when I was like seven or eight. Nice. Um, I actually, fun fact, I played ice hockey before oh, I started cool. martial arts, which is so funny because I think about it now and I'm like, wait, my parents let me play ice hockey when I was like, yeah. so, <laughs> whoa, but I must have, I must have been, I think I had a friend who, uh, who was playing and they were like, okay, if that's what you want to do. So I did that for like two years or so. And then um, sure. there was a karate school down the street from my house and I was a huge Power Rangers fan. Same. Just huge Power Rangers fan. And I have, I have a little brother named Evan, and we would just run around the house and cause mayhem and make yes. sound effects and fight each other and do the whole deal, you know? And it's, it's so funny because looking back, my dad, he, he, <laughs> he called it, like after we would watch an action movie or Power Rangers or something, Mm -hmm. We'd go on these tangents where he'd call it, we, we'd go on these tangents where he'd say, you guys need to stop whooshing. <laughs> that was his term because we would Perfect. just whoosh all around. Of course, the house, you know? I get it. <laughs> and so uh, we went to this karate school down the street and I got so lucky, you know, when I look back because it wasn't just a karate school in like a shopping center that was like low key. I mean, I mean, it was, but. Sure. The, the karate school that I stumbled upon ended up being a school that also did um, a lot of competitive martial oh, cool. arts. 
And so they were involved in the competition circuit, which is yeah. not something that everyone always gets um, access to. Sure. You know? Like sometimes you, you go in, you take classes and it's sort of a smaller school and they might not be as involved in that. So you don't, you don't necessarily see this whole other world mm-hmm. of competitive martial arts and all the other people that come with that. Um, sure. So I just got lucky because I started like any other kid and I just loved it. And I was going all the time. And then when I got my, actually not even when I got my black belt, even as an underbelt, my instructor, uh, Chris Redford was like, Hey, there's a lot of local tournaments around the area. You should go compete. Yeah. And so that's kind of how I started. I, and, and it gave me a whole nother reason to train, you know, as opposed to just right. going to class. Now you have something to train for and, uh, it's exciting as a kid. So yeah. yeah, I just got, I got super lucky just being exposed to that, which I didn't realize. And then right. after I got my black belt, I started to compete on the NASCA circuit, which is the North American mm-hmm. sport karate association. The, the big one, uh, the big one. Yeah. yeah. That has the tournaments all over the States and, and even, um, overseas, you know, in Ireland and all these other places, they have all these, these tournaments. And so, yeah, I, I started going to the look there were local NASCAR tournaments that happened to happen in the area. Cool. So like one of the, the school I went to hosted one of the big tournaments. So as a kid, I would go to this tournament. I didn't even have to go very far to see the immense amount of talent that was like in, in this yeah. world. So I got to see that. And then my, my mom and dad were super supportive and, you know, helped fund me traveling to tournaments and, you know, paying for registration and hotels and flights and just the whole, that was my life for, I don't know, know, 10 years or so. How cool is that? Yeah. Wow. Who's your favorite Power Ranger? Oh man. I mean, can't beat Tommy. Agreed. Um, but I always wanted to be the Red Ranger, no matter who it was. I just wanted to be that. (laughs) I know, I know what you mean. How, what's the age difference between you and your brother? Uh, two years. Two Perfect. Years, so two years I, younger. Um, and it's funny because he he started martial arts with me, mm-hmm. but it wasn't as much his thing. So he I, I stuck with it and that, that turned into my life. And then he went into a different type of performing, which was like live uh musical theater. Oh, cool. Performing and acting, live stage stuff. So yeah. He went to school and got a got a degree in uh in musical theater, I believe. And so he's kind of in his process now of uh, figuring out what he wants to do, whether he wants to go to New York or go to LA or go sure. find his, his niche. Um, I, I moved to Los Angeles right after I graduated high school. So I had a little bit sure. of, a, but um, that's awesome. Yeah. I didn't realize we had that in common. I have a younger brother who's also two years younger than me. And we oh, spent wow. our entire childhood fighting each other everywhere we could. There you like go. in restaurants, just picking fights. Oh, yeah. It's like, what is that? You just look at each other. It's and it's not malicious. It's just like, oh, we're gonna fight now. That's how this works. Yeah, it was just like <laughs> you watch those. It's so funny because you see the just the influence those. Yeah. The movies and the shows have on everybody is like it, it, that. Sh- that stuff sticks with you. It does. <laughs> you know, like it. It didn't go anywhere. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I remember I being know. in I remember awesome. being in youth group and the youth pastor would just be like, it's the balance boys that just just let them do what they're doing. And we just fight each other in like the, <laughs> the back of a church. And it's like, I don't know why. And they just let it happen too. It's like, are you gonna stop him? But so who's who's taller? You or him? I am by a little bit. Okay, you got lucky. My little brother's yeah, much yeah, bigger I than did. me. <laughs> yeah, and I and I beat down on him a little bit. I can't even try to lie. You, so you have to. I got I got you gotta maintain it, you know. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Mine taught me to use the surroundings because he got bigger than me pretty early on. And right. I was like, okay, just in a sheer strength contest, I'm probably not gonna do very well here. But if you slam his head into a wall, doesn't matter. You're like I can adapt. It's the great equalizer, right. you know. Right. I get it. Brothers, man. <laughs> yeah, man. No, it's, you, you love them and you need them sometimes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Look, look sometimes at now. a distance, sometimes up close. That's the give and take. Right. Right. I understand. <laughs> awesome. Do you do it martial arts when you're doing like competitions and stuff? Was it like sparring competitions or was it like forms? So I started 
I, I didn't do much sparring competitively at the school mm -hmm. we did. Sure. Uh, but the the passion I had was for for uh, the forums, the katas is what cool. I know them as. Um, mm -hmm. and, and and it was cool because the the Nazca circuit had it wasn't just like traditional forms, right? Uh, divisions, you know, they had like this whole array of of divisions you could compete in. And so I, I started off just doing traditional forms, of course, because mm -hmm. that's what you're trained in. So I did, I did uh, traditional forms and I, I started with American style Taekwondo. So cool. the kicks and, and it was the Junri system, if anybody knows. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I started with that and then I did traditional weapons. So I did a bow staff, did a Sweet. traditional form and that was how I started. And then there were all these other divisions of, extreme forms and musical forms and extreme weapons, creative weapons. There's all these, these different divisions. And I was like, I don't know how to do any of that. Yeah. <laughs> but you saw all these elite guys doing it. So I was like, Whoa. And so I'd go to these tournaments and I I'd just see these guys flipping around and twirling weapons and all that. And I, I would just go back to the karate school and just try it. Oh, cool. You know? And so that was my life as, as a kid. I, my, my karate instructor at the time would actually pick me up from school because both my parents worked. Mm -hmm. And so I would, I either was going to do like when I was really young, I'd go to an after school program, you know, at the school and hang out until they got off work. Sure. And eventually he was like, Hey, I'll, I'll just pick them up. Cause we don't start classes till, you know, three o'clock or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then he picked me up and then I would just like hang out at the karate school all day. Oh, and cool. Do my classes. And then my parents would pick me up at the end of the day. So I, I spent all that time at the karate school. Yeah. Uh, and within that, I would take these like little mats and like try flips and try, try all this stuff. And he would, you know, put a, put a belt on me and spot me. Oh, cool. Try to help me out. And so I would, I would just sort of try it. And at the time, YouTube wasn't necessarily a huge thing yet. It was starting. Mm -hmm. Um, and so luckily through, through the years of progressing, YouTube got big and then I could watch videos of people oh. and like slow them down and then kind of try to teach myself that way. Yeah. And so that's kind of what I would do. I would just, I just try stuff. <laughs> that's wild. Yeah. Especially something where you're like, the first thought has got to be, I might break my neck doing this. And you're like, eh. <laughs> but you know what? Again, fortunate as a kid, you don't think like that. Oh, sure. <laughs> you don't, you're like, I want to do a backflip. How do I try it? I mean, I had tons of, I had, I had tons of fear. I mean, going upside down and stuff, but sure. in terms of like thinking you're going to get hurt, you don't really think that way until you get hurt. Oh, okay. So it wasn't until I was a little older where like I, I sprained an ankle or, or tweaked something. And then, and then you get a little more timid and you get a little more voices right. in the back of your head that go, Oh, be careful. Cause the last time you try this, you hurt yourself. That's but right. You know, have that when you're really young that's why when you watch power Rangers, something you're jumping off of stuff and you know oh, that's like, a good point i never thought about thinking, that you're not thinking about that so i had i just had like the the free range of having uh flexible joints as a yeah. kid and, yeah. and just no fear that's right. you know so that's why it's hard to it's hard to teach tricking the older you get in the acrobatics because the more mental blocks you develop oh good point how did you, you know? get into tricking then? Because that's not the same thing as martial arts. It's a different. Uh, it well, here's the here's the cool thing is, tricking used to be, almost the same thing as competitive martial arts. Interesting. And it evolved to become its own sport. Gotcha. Okay. So at the time, the only people that were tricking were the people that were competing on NASCA. Oh. And it turned okay. into they would do jump, spin, kicks, and stuff in their forms. Right. Or a, or a flash kick, you know, a backflip, and mm -hmm. they would do, or a butterfly twist or a gainer. They would do those moves, a move or two involved in the choreography of their form. But gotcha. then the rest of the tournament, when you're not competing, people would just form groups off to the side and just trick. Oh, that's and cool. Like a rap them. battle. <laughs> yeah, or like a like a b-boy. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> kind, of, kind of the vibe. Sure. And so... It started off, you just learn kicks, then you learn to jump and kick, then you learn to spin and kick, uh, and then you learn to go upside down, you learn to do a backflip, then you kind of unlock another world of, of spins and stuff you can do. And sure. So 
I started, it, it all started definitely with martial arts and then it turned into just me in my backyard or me at the gymnastics gym, just mm-hmm. trying tricks. And then okay. that evolved to like, you know, it was like, then you'd have two separate sessions where one, one session you would train martial arts in your form. Mm-hmm. And then the other session would be just an hour or two of you just tricking. And so that turned into oh, cool. a sport, you know, and I'm so thankful that I was exposed to that aspect of martial arts because yeah. so many people aren't exposed to that. And then they sure. get their black belt at a school and they've achieved a, a life goal. And then they kind of don't have anywhere else to go with it besides, you know, you go take another class, you learn another form, mm-hmm. you know, and a lot of people get sort of bored of it and then they, they stop training. Sure. So, I had like all these other things to kind of like train and learn that kind of kept me involved in it. That's cool. That yeah. makes a lot of sense. Cause I remember watching one of the forms that you did. It was uh, one of the musical ones Yeah. and yeah. you've got the nunchucks and you have a flash kick in it. And I was like, yeah. this is nuts. Like was, yeah. was nunchucks something that you picked up pretty easily? Cause I've held them once and I did that dumb thing where you flick forward and it smashes your Damn. knuckles. And I was yeah. like, I think I'm good. I think I'm fine. It, you know, nunchucks are the hardest weapon, in my opinion. I bet. You're not controlling, you're not controlling one weapon. You're controlling two. Yeah. Because you're holding one, and then you have another one you have to control. Oh. And in terms of, like, just coordination and stuff, it, it's the hardest. But, again, I, I was lucky because at the, at the school I started in, uh, nunchucks was, like, their weapon. Oh, cool. That's kind of what they had. So, like, I know some schools that that'll have like a weapons class and it's mostly bow staff right? or they have like size and mm-hmm. commas because they're, they're much simpler weapons to teach, especially kids. Sure. Um, more, more basic movements you can teach and learn. Right. But nunchucks was just included in, oh. in the choice of classes. So it was already there and I thought they were cool. And I watched, you know, Ninja Turtles and the best one, Michelangelo around and, and like, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, I want to do that. What, 100%. What? So, and again, as a kid, I mean, you're hitting your head, you're hitting yourself in the head, uh, yeah, yeah, but you're having fun. So yeah, you're, <laughs> you're still but made a it, Tupperware. I did it all the time. Like I just like lived at the karate school. That's cool. I swung them around. So it's like, you do it enough. You get, you know, you get pretty good at it. Sure. And then it was awesome. Cause when I, 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 I branched away from my local karate school because of some personal things, but also more of the fact that they just, once I got to a certain point competing, they didn't have any more to offer me Sure. in that world. So I, I met a group of guys from Naperville, Illinois. Uh, John Sharkey runs Team AKA cool. Sharkey's Karate School. Mm-hmm. And also the guys that trained under Sensei Sharkey is like, the the list if you go on imdb of these people what they're doing now is insane yeah you know and so i i met those guys and i trained under them and i was lucky i knew how to do nunchucks a lot of guys didn't know how to do nunchucks so that was cool cool. one of the only guys that did nunchucks and so i got you know i I was able to help contribute to them with hey i do i do nunchucks and i got i can do tricks and stuff and Mm -hmm. then they had they trained shorei ru karate totally different style uh, and so then I learned from Sensei Sharky, uh, Shoru Karate, which was a whole nother world of martial arts. Sure. And um, I would travel. My, my parents would, my, my mom would fly me to Chicago and I would stay at the karate school there. Cool. And I would train through camps. They had like boot camp and winter camp and these sort of like couple day long, uh, like registered camps. And then there mm-hmm. it got to the point where, I would just fly there and hang out for my whole spring break and train nice. my, my friends there and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So that's, that's kind of how I got into that whole. That's world. cool. And yeah. all the while you're still te- the fact that you're teaching yourself tricking is crazy to me. Like, because there's such a foundation that you can get from gymnastics. You're like, I could figure it out. That's nuts. But you know, what's weird is because I, I ran into this and it's before tricking got, popular was it was hard to because now everyone kind of knows what tricking is, especially with right. the internet totally like if you're a gymnast you've seen videos of these guys doing gnarly stuff yeah but at the time it was weird because tricking and gymnastics are only similar in the in the fact that you go upside down right 
But in terms of the 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 dispersal of momentum and the axis, that yeah, strong, they're completely different. Interesting. So if I tell people that want to get into tricking, uh, if they want to do, if they want to start with gymnastics, mm-hmm. you pretty much get to a point where you want to learn. They can teach you how to do a backflip, a back tuck, mm-hmm. a you know you can learn the round off, you can learn back handspring, you can learn yep. back handspring into into backflip. And then you can learn, you can learn a full twist, but after that, the world's different. Right. Cause then you're, you're learning corkscrews, which are yeah. a full twist, but off of one leg and it's kind of on a different axis. It's so wild. Spinning. And so like, I would go to open gyms and they like, didn't really want you there. Because right. you weren't doing the correct technique. Sure. Picking up the floor. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it was a weird time where, like, they didn't know really what you were doing over there. They, you know, right. Like, you were just like flipping, and they didn't want you to get hurt because you're, they're liable. You're in their gym. It was like, sure. So many different things. Uh, but then eventually, I mean, I, I developed a relationship with the people there and they know me and I go there enough where it's like, oh, I train martial arts and this is this thing I do called tricking. And they're like, okay, cool. But mm-hmm. it was always weird when like, you'd find another open gym, maybe not, not in the same area or like in another state or something where you're like, Hey, can I drop in and pay the, the $10 and train? Sure. And like, yeah. But we only usually let our team members come to that and our, you know, right. So it, it, it is, it is a different world. Right. Because you're, you know, you're spinning besides sideways. Besides for like the, the fundamentals of going upside down. Right. I, 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 it's totally different. Interesting. I yeah. I never realized, because I don't do drinking, I never realized that yet is off one leg. and A lot of, a lot of the time, yeah. That's so and, nuts. And, and a lot of the gymnastics is about the, the aesthetics of, of twist, like doing a full twist, but still being straight up and down, landing on both feet, sticking the landing. Right pausing getting your points depending on you know where your toes pointed this 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 sure uh, with tricking that is a little different but in terms of like viewing pleasure a lot of those fundamentals are there just in a different way like right you watch someone do tricks and their knees are like two like two people doing the same move mm-hmm. you have one guy doing a double corkscrew and the other guy doing a double corkscrew sure that is you know jumping off one leg swinging it up doing two full spins and then landing on the ground right so in gymnastics it would be like a double full but it's not you know gotcha but it's like aesthetically if one guy does the same move and they land Mm -hmm. but one guy's legs are bent and their toes are flexed and and their arm positioning was weird they did the move but it doesn't look as as cool right Right. So it sure. still kind of counts as opposed to the other guy who maybe he he jumped off one leg, he set high, wrapped in tight, pointed his toes, kept his legs straight, landed. Uh, you know, that's what you want to see visually. Right, right. Does the same move, you know? Sure. Makes total sense. And but it does it, it they they do compare. Sure. Just different, you know. Yeah, same, same, but different. Yeah, same, yeah. same, but different. Exactly. <laughs> I don't even I get know what it. I'm doing with all that I'm just this is what I'm here for Ross I'm here for you and okay. also I'm very glad you brought up the double corkscrew because I happen to know you were the seventh person in the history of ever to land a triple right huh that's crazy you did your research I listen that's what I did totally did your research <laughs> dude that's <laughs> what are the intricacies of a triple cork it you know so it's so funny because I forget about that whole little chunk of my life there. Cause I devoted so much time yeah. to, get, to get that trick because people are doing quads <sighs> yeah. and people what? are going, people are going for Quint, which is fine. What? And that just goes to show the, the evolution and how fast it's evolved. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think that's all because of the internet, but we can go. Gotta be right. For that. But I mean, at the time, when I started tricking, a triple corkscrew was impossible. Nobody had ever done it. Right. Do it. It's. I mean. I mean, you can maybe in the future someone. Yeah. Will do it. <laughs> yeah. And then there was this really cool thing where YouTube was getting big, mm-hmm. and everyone was making these tricking samplers, and you were starting to see these people from around the world tricking. 
Yeah. Like, oh, never seen those guys at tournaments before. They're just in Australia going to gyms, tricking now. And sure. So you, you become uh, familiarized with all these new guys. And there was like this era of pushing, just pushing these, the beginning of the era of pushing everything where, yeah. you know, I forget who the first, oh, the, the first triple cork, I think was Scotty Skelton out of Australia. Perfect. And he posted on YouTube a clip of him in his gym with his buddies. And he did, I think he had a weird, an interesting entryway. It wasn't like an, a, a popular way to get into tricks at the time in terms of like the, the entry. Sure. He did like a scoot and then he did like a Valdez, which is like a one-handed backhand spring. And he uh -huh. built up all this momentum and then he swung up and he did boom, 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 one, two, three, and he landed it. <sighs> And I saw that and I was like, oh shit, someone did it. It's yeah. Possible. You know? Yeah. And he landed it like a double cork. It wasn't like sketchy. Wow. Like, he landed it. There's no, nobody's going to be talking. I don't know. Sure. Like, it was like super legit and it was awesome. And I saw it and I was, you know, I'm young and I'm like, double cork is easy for me now. Yeah. I can and, and I, I wanted to, to get to the point where like I could do double cork anywhere, you know, sure. You know, concrete, just do it. Boom. You do it there. Boom. It's yours. It's in your back pocket. Right. So, yeah. I, I double cork was getting easy. And I was like, all right, let me, I, I got to try triple. And it was like, just a, just a process of like jumping, trying to spin three times. And a lot of the times sort of losing where you're, where you are in the air. Cause I feeling bet. like spinning three times is just a totally different feeling because you're used to opening up for the ground after two. So yeah, now you gotta you can't just do the same set as a double cork and then try to spin three times and then land because your trajectory in the air is different now. Oh yeah, you gotta jump and then you gotta start spinning a little bit earlier so that way you can finish the spin by the time you land. And so oh. it was just a repetition uh, battle for me. I just I just did it thousands of times i would say just yeah doing it and just getting a little bit closer a little bit closer a little bit closer and i it's cool because and as i was trying it new people would come out every couple days or every couple weeks it was like a pretty short span of time i would say where a new guy would post it online and there'd be another guy who did it oh it was like, and that's why i say the internet is is the catapult because once sure. you see something is possible totally it's possible it's not impossible anymore totally so it was like once the the triple cork was landed everyone was like okay who's gonna do four yeah <laughs> like it just went right to right to i that, see you, know? you. <laughs> yeah right the, the yeah the, the the competitiveness of it yeah but so i was i was training it and then i'd go online and i was big on facebook back then i would talk to trickers you know who cool kind of not even around me it was like sure the world you talk to these guys that's cool. And, and ask for tips and share things that you're doing. And yeah, it was awesome. And I, and I just remember every couple of days, someone would do it and I was trying them and I was like, I'll, I'm going to get it. I right. got to do it. I wanted to be like, the, I wanted to be the second one that someone else did it. I wanted to be the yeah. third one. <laughs> and you know, so I was, I was pushing it, but yeah, there was, there was a day I remember I, I would train in my front yard of my house Ooh, because on the earth, I couldn't, <laughs> couldn't drive to the gyms i was young oh right <laughs> and so i would get this urge to train and i'm like okay i'm just gonna train in the yard you know after school or, or sure whatever. and so there, there was a day i remember i was super i was a a teenage kid tons of emotions and just of course <laughs> something happened and <laughs> i was it. all upset right and so and that's what i would do i, I that was my sort of outlet it was like go train, oh, cool. go train go try any things you know right and so I, remember I, just, I was just super pumped up. Somebody posted a clip of them doing it. I guess whoever number six was. Sure. Uh, I think it, I'd have to look back to see who number six was. But I I went out in my yard and I just was like, I'm going to do it. Triple, I'm, I'm going to do it. And I, I warmed up, did a couple doubles, tried one triple and like, got my feet on the ground. I didn't land it, but I like okay. felt the earth. Right. And yeah. it like clicked. I was like, boom, got it. And so I went and, and I set up a, a camera and I think I used one of the first, it was like one of the first, uh, of those handheld cameras. Oh, perfect. Like the flips. 
like the flip yeah yeah the flip right well, it was the there. first like small one before the gopro right uh-huh uh-huh and i been had there. one of those and so i put it up boom turned on some music and i just went for it and i landed it sweet and i, I actually no no story's wrong oh i didn't pull the camera out yet oh no you landed it without recording because i was so i was so pumped right <laughs> i didn't even really care i just wanted to do it like the energy was there yeah Boom, I did touchdown raise, which is like a one hand backhand spring type thing. Uh-huh. Swung up, boom, boom, boom. And I landed it, but I didn't think I did a triple court because it just didn't seem real. Gotcha. I, landed it. I was like, whoa. Sure. Uh, and so I was like, whoa, that couldn't have been it. But let me go film it to see. There you go. There you go. You know? And so that's what it was. And I went and got the camera and I landed a second time. And it's funny because the reaction in my video, I'm like, yeah. Oh, but it's, not, it. it's not my first reaction because uh, the one. yeah <laughs> it's the second one i did but uh yeah i wow. landed it and i went i posted it on youtube like i went just went straight to the computer posted on youtube said triple cork and then i had to go to math tutoring at the library of course as you do and went there and couldn't think about math yeah for a <laughs> so i'm like i'm the seventh one in the world to do triple cork get it in it and then i go do math and come home and my video was blown up you know at the time yeah, i yeah. had five thousand views that's like wild a and a bunch of comments and everyone's like holy shit number seven you know yeah and it gave me that validation of like okay the community counts it that yep. means it's legit you know boom and i in was the books. Stoked, so stoked uh that's so cool and it's so crazy thinking about because now people do four and film yeah <laughs> But at the time, yeah, I was number seven. And then at the time, I was the youngest. Which was, oh, dude. I was like 13 or 14, I think. That's and then nuts. And then last couple of years, some of the kids from Japan and like Russia, they were landing it at like nine years old or something. Of course. <laughs> but they did because they saw yeah. you do it. This is how but this that's works. That's kind of how it works, you know? It's kind of cool. I love that. And now, and now Triple is like a, it's like not even impressive to some people unless you do it in an impressive way yeah of course so people can do it of you know? course <laughs> and it's been years since i've done it but it's in there so it's in there <laughs> wild what was it that clicked where you're like oh i think i got this was it a angle thing was it a momentum thing what was it it was remember? yeah a little bit of both i i had gotten to the point where i could hold all three spins without any hiccup okay and and that was the thing was like when i first was learning it or first trying it, I would do a double and then there'd be a little like hiccup. And then I would go for the third one. Like my mm-hmm. brain was like, Oh, you have to do another one. Sure. You know? And then I got to the point where I could, I could hold it fluidly, but I just wouldn't gotcha. get my hip quite to the ground. I would like get to my hip. Sure. Um, and so I think it was just, it's just, a mu- it was just a muscle memory thing of my body feeling three spins and then mm-hmm. knowing just, knowing when to open up and when to get your feet down to the ground wow and i think it, it really was it was me in my yard doing one and feeling my feet hit the ground yeah before i sort of went down and mm-hmm. that that unlocked it it was like whoa i felt gotcha. the that's the timing and then boom it clicked wow yeah do you get dizzy up there or it happens so quickly that you're just it happens uh. super quick but it's it's like one of those things where if you it, it's the repetition so i, I got used mm-hmm. to it you know, it's like gotcha. if, you, if you don't do spins and you put on socks on hardwood floor and you try to do some spins, you're going to be losing it. But if you did ballet and you did, oh, spin good ballet, point. you kind of have it down. So sure. I think it was just a, yeah, just a repetition, just a repetition deal. That makes sense. You just get conditioned. Yeah, so crazy. I haven't thought about any of that. In so this long. is what I do. This it's is, awesome. this is what I do. Awesome. That's so when did you decide you wanted to do stunts then? Because that's a very specific thing to want to get into. Yeah, for sure. Well, I didn't know I wanted to do stunts, actually. Makes sense. Uh, I, I knew that. So when I, when I started training with Sensei Sharky and I got on Team AKA and I started competing, mm-hmm. the, the generation above me was a group of guys who pushed, pushed the level as far as they could within the sport of, mm-hmm. you know, sport martial arts. And then they kind of had to find out what was next for them because gotcha. it's like, okay, either we go get a real job somewhere and just enjoy that we did martial arts for the first part of our lives. Right. Or we continue this in some way. Mm-hmm. And so 
I was really fortunate because I had a generation above me that did the first sort of jump to LA. Gotcha. And it started off with them. They did live performances, live. Oh, cool. Like stunt shows type thing. Yeah. In, 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 uh, the, the, one of the guys, Matt Mullins developed Sideswipe, which was under Sharky's karate. Mm -hmm. And, uh, they did America's got talent. Gotcha. Cool. More than 10 years ago now where they, they put choreography to music and with acrobatics and martial arts, they made a live show out of it. Cool. And it was the first season ever, I think, of America's Got Talent, or like the second, or the first. Yeah. yeah. So it was, there. And it was the first time that the world kind of saw. Uh, not, not the first time, but like in, in terms of like a general On audience. such a stage, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so they did that, and then they were like, okay, uh, we did that, let's go to L.A., and see if we can get in the entertainment business. And a lot of the guys that started off, they didn't know the the stunt world was a thing, but you don't know about it because you're not in it. Of course, yep. They they showed up and they they did everything they could to find something to do. So a lot of the guys that started off with modeling, you know, they're all in good shape. They train all day. Like, okay, someone says I could could do like some modeling. So they started with that Mm -hmm. or uh, live shows or even like dance stuff. So- Oh, interesting. So when I, when I moved to LA, I had no idea I wanted to do stunts, but I knew I wanted to be in movies. I'm like, yeah, of I watch movies, and I watch these guys do martial arts and movies. Like, right. That, but I didn't know that that was like stunt work. Gotcha. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. And so when I first got here it to, to pay the bills and stuff, cause I, I moved when I was really young and my parents wanted me to go to college. Of course. Fair enough, yep. And I didn't want to go. And I, I just had this tunnel vision of wanting to do this stuff out here. And so I had this sort of flame under me, which I think, I thank my parents for now, but I was like any, anything to, to pay the bills and learn more about this city and just yeah. how this works. And so I started off actually with dance jobs. Awesome. It's funny because I can't really dance per se. Yeah. <laughs> and I never took real legit dance classes growing up. So I can't say I'm a dancer. Right. But I would go to these uh, cattle call dance auditions, which is just a giant room full of people for a tour, for an artist, mm-hmm. for an award show, something where they want background dancers. Sure. And the generation of guys above me sort of set their foot in that world and added the tricking. Ah, uh, makes sense. And they had never seen that stuff before. And so right. by the time I got out to LA, some of the older guys had already started going on like tours with some artists. Oh, cool. Doing tricks and and doing some break dancing stuff and stuff like that. And so I got out here and before really knowing what stunts was, I had some guys go like, hey, here's a guy at an agency that I know. I'm not a part of the agency anymore because I'm doing other stuff, but this mm-hmm. is the guy I know. Uh, hit him up, send him a reel of you doing your moves, and then um, they'll, they'll send you to dance auditions. Cool. And so that's where I started. I go to these auditions and fake the choreography as much as I could yeah (laughs) and then I would just do there'd always be at the end portion where so in the beginning you'd learn their choreo as fast as you could Mm -hmm. perform it in a a group they'd watch you and at the end there was always a freestyle perfect where it was just a cipher of people and if you had something you wanted to showcase you could do it and that's where I ended up being able to showcase you know sure so after doing terrible and or mediocre <laughs> dance choreography, Dancing. I was able to go out there and do some really cool flashy tricking moves. Sure. So some of these, some of these uh, choreographers would be like, okay, you can't dance, <laughs> but <Fair enough. laughs> that was super cool. So we're going to, we're going to hire you and you'll rehearse awesome. with us, but you're not going to dance. Yeah. <laughs> going to come out in between numbers and we'll have you hit beat some music and do the flashy moves, you know? Oh, cool. And so they'd hire me and another guy or like four trickers mm-hmm. or two trickers to come out and do pieces of the performance to add the flair. Oh, awesome. And so I did, I did that for a while. I would do, you know, kids choice awards. Awesome. Or, uh, MTV movie awards. You get hired, do rehearsals for a week, go perform. Um, mm-hmm. or even I, one of my last sort of dance gigs was I did a, 
uh, North American tour with LL Cool J. Dude. <laughs> where I, I wore awesome. a Adidas tracksuit and did the breakdancing moves I did know how to do and then just did tricks and uh, what? sort of just did that for a while and performed at, at some amazing venues with tens of thousands of people. And it was wow. It was awesome. But I got to the point where I kind of hit my limit in that. Right. I was like, okay, this is super fun. But then I had this realization. I'm like, okay, but I'm not a dancer. And either I have to learn how to actually dance because this yeah. isn't sustainable. <laughs> it's like, I can gig, I can do a job or two here and there when they hire me. But like, in terms of getting on a, a world tour or mm -hmm. finding an artist that's going to hire you, yeah, I have to actually learn how to dance. <laughs> right, right. And I was like, but I'm a martial artist. I don't, I don't really want to actually, I don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> uh, other than like maybe a hobby. Right. Know, I didn't want that to be my job. And so I did that for a while. And then it was sort of like a rite of passage where like I moved out here young. I knew some older guys that were mm -hmm. out here and they kind of did that path too, where they just gigged. Sure. Doing live shows and stuff. Get and then the it was sort of like a, a rite of passage where I was out in LA for a couple of years doing that. And then people are like, okay, Ross has been here for a while. Let's like call him in and he can do uh, a previs or something for a film we're doing. Or oh, cool. Something. And so I, uh, I ended up meeting enough people along the line where I did a, you know, a year or so of basically just free work where you're like, Hey, I'm sure. available and I want to learn how you guys do this stuff. So I go yeah. to the gym and practice the fight choreography and do wire gag or something for something that they're already working on where they just oh, need an extra body. Sure. So I did that for a while and, and I was able to learn, you know, how, how some of these rigging, um, gags work and and mm -hmm. the body mechanics of riding wires and screen fighting and all that because screen fighting is totally different than actual martial arts because you're not actually hitting anybody oh uh, good point and it's actually closer to dance really <laughs> it's to martial arts in terms of fight choreography not the moves but the yeah yeah them and the type of uh just mental capacity it takes to remember you know 100 beats of a fight and perform it sure like that and so it's a whole that's a whole nother world where you had to learn how to not hit people or kick yeah. an actor but not make it hurt yeah you know? and so that was a whole nother thing and it was cool because the dance world had taught me a lot about remembering choreography right so that kind of translated even though i wasn't great at dancing now i i learned how to learn choreography really fast and then perform it at audition oh so that helped me out and then the the other the other aspect of it was just learning was then learning the stunt stuff, which is right. Screen fighting, learning the camera angles, where do you punch to make it look like it hits without yeah. the camera having to tell you every take, you know, you got to learn wh wherever the camera guy's holding the camera, you have to know where to do the move to make it. sell. gotcha. Was and there a learning that, curve for that? It, it is. Yeah. It's, it's because as a martial arts, especially if you grow up fighting, which is why yeah. it's hard for a lot of people who and, and they think it's easy like if you go from being an mma fighter like a legit fighter where you go in and you're trying to break someone's face yeah or kick them as hard as i can you might have an awesome martial arts background but in terms of screen fighting you're going to be doing the opposite of what you know how to do which is oh. not telegraph any move you're going to do because you don't want your opponent to know what's coming right and you're never going to stop a punch you're always going to follow through right you know and so it, the learning curve is that where it's you you learn how to make it look like you're hurting, oh. you know and in in telegraphing it's a dance with the, the person you're fighting where you have to show them the move that you're going to be doing next so that way they can bob and weave it or you know duck under yeah, yeah. the punch and if you just throw it as fast as you can like you were to actually do it they don't have the opportunity to now engage in the choreography, which is to move and prep oh. for the next move. And there's a lot of, it's a dance. Yeah. Uh, with martial arts moves. So interesting. It is, it is a learning curve, but it's, a, it's an art and it's awesome. Where yeah. You can come up with, you know, you can read a script that says, you know, so, well, each script is different. You could have a script that has a super general thing like, 
uh, Ross throws a big punch and knocks the guy out. And sure. that's all they've got. But they really <laughs> want to fight. And so you can kind of choreograph a fight and then shoot it and show the camera angles that are going to make these moves look cool and, and, and choreograph it with a partner and show the choreography. Uh, and, and there's a real creative like contribution you feel other than just doing, doing moves. Right. Cause you're choreographing it. You're trying to show, you know, this character is the strong, is strong and he's feeling this. So he's going to do these type of moves or, this guy's a superhero and he's stronger than this guy. So he would do this type of move to this guy. And this guy would react this way because of how strong they are. Sure. Know? Instead of just like throwing a punch at a guy. Right. Have a reason. Have in a, a specific and, way. Right. And, and fights have, have evolved as well. Cause it used to be a, a, a fight in a movie was a bar fight. It was right. Cowboys. It sure. was, uh, it wasn't an intricate type of, fight it was you know you grab a bottle you break it over someone's head you grab them you throw them over a table right you tussle, and that's kind of what it is and then and then it just it, it expands you have the world of taekwondo where people are now jump kicking and kicking yeah. guys and you know van damme and you know mm -hmm. jackie chan and all those guys and then you have you know the last 10 years which is superheroes now where now right. they're not doing regular moves now they can fly and they can jump and they can do all those moves so that's where where the world that i'm in sort of kicked off which is where people that could do trick uh tricking moves realized well wait a uh... second in that in in that superhero movie it took them six hours to get some guy on a line wrap it around them set up the wires you know pull a guy, let him spin on the wires and kick a guy. And then we got to shoot it after we rehearse it. And it takes a whole day to do that move. Right. And then there was a group of guys that were like, wait, I can do that move without any wires. Right. And the whole world was like, whoa, these guys save us a ton of time and they can do it. And they have the control to flip and then kick someone. And that's what the comic books look like is yeah. <laughs> in the air and he's kicking a guy. They're like, whoa, that's the move we want without even sure. knowing what the move is yeah yeah you know? that's so cool yeah it's what was your first movie you worked on because you went there to do movies what was your first one do you remember right i started well i started off with tv cool because at the time the features were the big ones to get right on, sure right so Always. it was like you had to you had to really be a guy to be like yeah for sure but one of the first things i got to really do tricks in as a feature was deadpool what? the first one 2016 your, your first your but it first was 2015 ish movie. deadpool you know at. you know people have seen that movie oh for sure and i'm not and i'm not <laughs> i'm not the only double for deadpool either sure was, of course they, they shot the whole movie that was that was like the first big big one i got to be a part of though. that's awesome because they they shot the film in Vancouver, I believe. They mm -hmm. had Alex Kishkovich, which is an amazing stuntman, amazing acrobat. He doubled uh, Deadpool in the suit mm -hmm. for most of it. And then they came back to LA to do the motion capture aspect. Oh, and the cool. The director of that film was, I, I think he's part owner or one of the owners of, uh, or was, or I don't know, but Blur, Blur Studios. Oh, sweet. And Darren, so they had, yeah, there, yep. right? and that, that's actually where I met Darren first. Oh, time. makes sense. Super cool. Uh, and it was like, they had already planned that movie out to shoot, shoot the legit stuff on the highway and shoot that stuff. But they already knew what they were going to do digitally because they're oh, so good. At that. Yeah. So they had all these pieces of the movie that they knew they were just going to go back and do in a mocap volume after the fact. Gotcha. And so I was fortunate enough to get called to, come in for the motion capture sort of additional photography or uh not really sure. but just fill, filling out the film right so all the cg shots where he's in the air slowly and he's shooting and he's flipping that's yeah. the stuff i got to do which is oh cool awesome yeah what so that was that was my my first real experience with uh with a big film like that especially because at the time nobody knew deadpool was going to be a huge film yeah for sure you know? it was a slightly lower budget and everyone loves deadpool but nobody quite knew right love it and be, become deadpool of course in terms of feature films right 
So when that came out, it was like, and I got to see how, oh, wait, I did that. I did that little piece right there. And, and whoa, that connects that fight. And I got to do that. It was, it was awesome. That's so cool. Yes. And that was, that was mocap. That was mocap. Did the whole jumpsuit and the whole everything. Yeah. All the, all the markers jumping, flipping. What shooting. is it? Is it tough to also point a gun in the midst of spinning in the air? Oh yeah. Has to be right. Cause you're saying you're tucked a lot when you're doing that, but now you have to. Yeah, that's yeah. It, it again, it's like just cause you're a martial artist or just cause you're a tricker doesn't mean right. It's because you might be doing a corkscrew and you're great, but the director's like, Hey, in the middle of that, yeah. <laughs> you need to point the gun, not just anywhere, but in this specific direction Oof. or, or, you know, stuff like that. So it, it was hard. And, and luckily we're so advanced in the, in the mo motion capture technology where like, you can, you can splice things together. You can get a piece of something. Right. And you, and you can make it work. So there was a lot of organic stuff. And then there was a lot of stuff where they were like, okay, you don't have to land, but I need you to do this flip in this direction and point the gun here. And then once you stick it, we need the gun to like completely stick out. Once you've hit that pose, you can, you can, doesn't matter what you do. Like Got you it. can fall on the mat, you know? Sure. And so it would be like that. And even that's hard. You're flipping, you're going upside down and then you're pointing a gun where you might think it might be right, but that's not where they need it. They need it in a different direction. Oh, was so it a lot of takes? Lot of yeah. So we would do. Not not too many takes, but enough to to feel it out and then know exactly what they need. Gotcha. You know? And it was like so. Some of it was that it was flip, point the gun, then fall, then the other pieces. You start like this, continue to another spin, and then they could stitch it. Oh, cool. Yeah, I love stuff like that. The behind the scenes process oh, of dude, that because so nobody cool knows, and you don't even know what you're doing sometimes when you're yeah. in their work. <laughs> sure, you're in a in a in a gray room with cameras, so you're. You're right. trying to get the vision of, of what the director wants. And it might not even completely be a visual picture in your head because you don't quite understand what you're working on. You, you know, right. I wasn't there when they shot the movie. So I'm learning about it in the spot, what they need to stitch certain things together that they've already shot. And then it's gotcha. not until you watch the movie where you go, whoa, that was me. Right. Wow, and it's all so you cool. know, digital. They put the suit on you and all that stuff. So you almost wow. miss if uh if you don't know, like, what yeah, you know? which, is the, which is the movie magic on their part. Agreed. Was that your first mocap gig? That was my first. That might've been my first mocap gig. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So that was, yeah, a, a, a huge job. Yeah. <laughs> first time in a mocap suit, first time on a, on a big feature like that with, Dude. you know, the director in the room and other other people that are in charge of different departments and sure i, I, I want to say that was my first exposure to that but then my my mocap career took off after that yeah for the part um, yeah and I, and with features and and video games you know sure i i might i so might be slightly aware of your resume perhaps maybe, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> That's not, I do love the idea. I love talking to people who've achieved their dreams because like you said, it shows that it's possible. And the fact that you're like, I want to work in movies oh, sure. and you're like, all right, well now you're doubling Deadpool, but it's not the way that you think because I, you probably didn't imagine you'd be wearing a mocap suit on a mocap stage. No, I love no. that. Cause it's, it's always different than you expect, you know? Oh, it's, well, I mean, like I said, when I moved here, I didn't know. Sure. And I didn't know how a movie works. Sure. Like, you, you have a painted picture in your head of whatever mm -hmm. it is making it and yep. the way you think it is. And it's not till you're there where you realize what, what real life is and how things work. Sure. Know? But so I know shortly after that, you had to have done, if my years are correct, call of duty. Cause that was around that time. Actually the first one of the, well, because of how long it took, I started Spider-Man before. Oh, that. right. Yeah. Cause it's years dude and, talk about and, another big role and insomniac the the best thing about that game was they almost had like no real deadline in sight sure it was like we're gonna make one of the best games ever and then once it's ready we'll release it and so awesome. over the course of like three maybe four years i worked on the original spider-man game 
dude. And there would be blocks where like, I'd be working on it for weeks on end. And then there'd be blocks where they'd go back, animate, come back, pick up days, go back. So over the course of the next couple of years, I worked on, on Spider-Man. It took, it took a long time. How'd you get that? It's Spider-Man. <laughs> so that was, I mean, again, I, I was so fortunate to know some guys that were already here. Hell uh, yeah. And uh, cool story, but uh, Matt Mullins, who did Sideswipe mm-hmm. live shows, which is where I started, he, I think, got a call for Spider-Man really early on. And I think he he was working on it a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then he got busy. He went to fight, coordinate a, a big feature film or something. And he told them, hey, there's a guy who can actually do some more tricks than I can because he's older than me now. And sure. tricking had already progressed quite a bit. Like mm-hmm. like now, the, some of the kids are doing some stuff that I've never even seen before. Sure. So he he put my name in there and it was like, they were just starting the game. Like Perfect. they hadn't even, they haven't, they hadn't even done the, the, the full in-game motion capture of like walking and turning sure, and, 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 and all the mechanics. So I got mm-hmm. to go in there and basically start from the beginning of production wow. and get to see the entire game, get, get made and then get released. And so Dude, what a gift. The, the coolest thing and again like like deadpool you're i i go to work i'm in a mocap suit Mm -hmm. i'm in a big gray room yeah and you have apple boxes and wooden things and you're pretending that they're real yeah and you're doing that for four years wow and then it's not until the game comes out and you see how spectacular this game is how well received it is by everybody and then you get to see everything that you did over four years in a real life world. Wow. And then that's when you go, whoa, we, yeah. did, we made this game. We, we and, and again, not just me. There were so many people. Involved. Of course. But, um, but yeah, it's so funny because like in the moment you're waking up and you're like, okay, going to work. But right. it doesn't necessarily hit you that you're working on Spider-Man all the time yeah you know and some days are harder than others some days are of course more taxing it just dream job is still a job it it, i mean no matter what right you gotta go and you gotta Mm -hmm. go get there on time you know yep but uh so cool but it's that's the thing in our business where like you can sit on a on a film or a game and spend a year of your life devoted to making this Mm -hmm. but it's not it's not what everyone sees until it's what everyone sees so right when it comes out, I'm seeing it for the first time as someone else who never stepped foot on the set. Right. You know, dude. and it's a movie. So some things are so heavily uh, edited with CGI now. And, mm-hmm. and you're seeing worlds of things that never even were there when you're filming it. And you yeah. see, it, you know, that's so wild. And that's because wild. he's one of my favorite people in the whole world. Did you get to work with Yuri? I sure did. Isn't he oh, the greatest great human being? Human that guy is. Oh man, he's the best, dude. That was the best. I mean, in terms of like doubling an actor, I like to say, yeah, that, yeah. The, one of the coolest guys. Oh my god, and agreed in just every way. I mean, I love you, that guy. You had him on here, didn't you? I scrolled I did. Through, uh, yeah, I scrolled through your list and I was like, oh, Yuri did it. So yeah, like, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's become a good friend, and what a what a gem of a human being. You know what's cool too is. I'm I'm convinced because a lot of the times they have the actors in sort of a different set of shoot shooting schedules sometimes sure. than some of the other performers because they want to get the dialogue and they want to get specific things with the facial capture and, right. like that. and sort of like they want to devote the time to that. Mm-hmm. And I remember I, I would do in-game mocap shoots for Spider-Man before I even met Yuri, oh, where I was cool. doing, I was doing all the Spider-Man poses and walking and crawling and, and just hours and hours of gameplay movement. Sure. And then they would bring me in for a couple like performance capture days where Yuri's mm-hmm. there, uh, Tara's there and Great. the other character, Steve O'Young. And, um, they would have me in there as, as Spider-Man sometimes and then other background characters and stuff like that. Sure. It it probably would have stayed that way. But Yuri, being the amazing guy he is, 
early on in the project basically said, hey, how come Ross isn't here all the time when we do these shoots? And I'm what? thinking to myself, oh, I didn't even know you guys were doing other shoots. What? I'm not yeah. Sure. <laughs> you guys are doing other, like what? And so they were like, oh, well, you know, we thought you could do like some of the movement and stuff. And he totally can. Right. He's an amazingly talented guy. But he's yeah. like, he's like, yeah, I can. But like bring Ross in because then he could do it. And then I can do the, 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 uh, you know, the, the dialogue. Yeah. And Ross can still do the movement. And, and I would be like, you're, you can do this. Why don't you just do it and he's like no you do it it's cool just go do it you know uh, which is like so rare also by an actor i bet uh, and i'm not gonna say i do all of it because yuri did do a lot of it and that guy yeah. has a mean spider-man crawl yeah, i bet he does he was a gymnast yeah. oh yeah dude he's i mean he he he's would everything. do spider-man he would do spider-man crawls off to the side that weren't even being captured as like a workout That's and then amazing. we would be like shooting them off to the side i'm like yuri you just do it dude yeah <laughs> I gotta do the next scene i'll just think about that and let you do it i'm like oh my god that's just awesome the best experience in terms of collaborating the team as well the insomniac team of yeah are like the most collaborative people because like i said each production is different so i'll go in and do mocap for one job where that studio particularly needs like specific like precise movements and they have to match and you'll do 50,000 takes of it until it matches because that's what they need to make whatever they're going to make work. Right? right. And then Insomniac would go, Hey Ross. So we just want something cool here. Right. <laughs> what do you got? You know? And I'd be like, uh, well, what's the idea? And they go, well, we want it to look cool. And that's the idea we got. So perfect. Go for it. And then I would give them, <laughs> I'd give them options and some of them not perfect in terms of like maybe like the positioning they needed for for the next cut scene or something sure but it would be a, a cool move i've always wanted to maybe do in a game or something sweet they'd go, they'd go they'd go it's fantastic we'll have an animator adjust the landing and it's going to work great and i'm like awesome. oh <laughs> sweet you know? because that's the hard part too like sometimes a move you might want to do might not match something that they need you know, like mm. you might want to do a triple cork, but unless you can land it in a specific pose on top of a, a light post. Right. Right. And it's not going to be accomplished. So they were super collaborative and just being like, okay, give us the best movement you can. And then we have a great team of animators who can adjust things. Like if you need to shoot a web here or you need to land on a smaller object, you know, we'll just adjust it with the, wow. Animator. The greatest insurance ever. Dude, so it just gave me so much freedom. I'm like, okay, like done. I'll just do as many cool moves as I got and we'll see where they end up, which is cool because then you play the game and you're like, you know, you forget about what you do over the course of three years. Sure. Like, oh, that made the game. They made it work. It's cool, you know? Wow. And you got to voice in the game as well. I did. How cool is that? How did that Super happen? Cool. Like I said, that team is awesome, man. They, they were like, if I'm remembering this correctly, it was something like they, they were doing a, a day with uh, Naji, mm -hmm. uh, Miles Morales. Mm -hmm. And they were like, oh, wait, we need a guy to be his friend who does this dialogue. And I was, I remember I was just being the guy doing the movement. Right. So I was, you know, giving him a handshake, then and that. Right. Matching the dialogue and then walking out. And then one of the directors, Chris, was like, all right, Ross here's your audition say the lines dude <laughs> like just it, it, just in the volume and i was like okay and so we did it they mic'd me or no i did it she was like okay go for it so they mic'd me and then they let me be the guy you know wow and it was it was so cool and, and i got to do little voices here and there for background characters and that's awesome like that. and it, it was just really cool to be included yeah because it's, that's a whole nother side of a, of a video game yeah you know, Yuri and those guys, that's their world. Right. Uh, I, I flip off things and yeah, <laughs> we all have our strengths, Ross. We all have our strengths, but it was, it was so cool to be included. Yeah, I bet. That's so awesome. That's awesome. And obviously you can tell I, I'm a, yeah. I'm a, I'm a fan of, of Star Wars a little oh, bit. Dude. Do how did you get involved with the Mandalorian? So Mandalorian was, 
I get involved in Mandalorian? It's so funny. It's it's word of mouth in my world. So always, always. It was it was a uh, a buddy who probably just put my name and they needed guys. Cool. And actually, no, it goes back. So Ryan Ryan Watson was the coordinator. Awesome. Uh, of the first season and he was actually in talks of he was trying to find a guy to double mando gotcha early early on and sure. i was in talks with him about possibly going into some fittings for that but and there was all this stuff and then people got busy and moved around and then he had latif crowder legend one of long time buddies legend double mando which was awesome but yeah so what's cool was i had already talked to ryan a little before the season had started so he had called me when they were prepping and say, hey, uh, you know, Latif's Mando, but come be Stormtrooper and all the other characters, you know, throughout the season if you're around. So, yeah, uh, I did season one and two just off and on as a bunch of different characters because everyone's That's in a so helmet. Cool. Yeah, and it's awesome because on, on some TV shows. You know, if you're if you come in as a cop and you're like, hey, put your hands up and they shoot you, it's hard to put you in the next episode because you just came out and said a line. Right. Sure. You got spent getting burned. Yep. You know. Yep. But on a show like that, it's pretty hard to get burned. You got masks and helmets and all that. So she sure. kept me pretty busy on those uh first two seasons, just being a bunch of guys. Wow. How many awesome. did you end up playing? Do you know? Oh uh, man. Gotta be like close to 10 different characters what yeah. that's so cool everything from like imperial soldier to you know i'm trying to think of all the other ones the sand the sand guys oh yeah yeah wow all of them. <clears throat> it's so cool they just yeah. swap the costumes get back in there yeah just and it's easy because they can use it's cool too because they it's like a, on a production they've already got your sizes yep oh, and i fit in i fit into and again fortunate my whole life has been very fortunate All right uh, is i i'm i'm a good size for those characters stormtroopers Perfect. and all those characters are like a general size sure so you had to find he had to find guys that fit the suits you oh, know? And so okay. once once a big company like lucas films or disney has approved you as fitting this size and you know you've gone in a suit you've gone into a fitting i've taken a picture someone's looked at it and has approved you now you're on a list you're approved so it's easier to use the oh. state who fit the 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 suits than bringing in a new guy every week who has to get fit in approved you know all that right so i kind of like fitted and then i was able to play a bunch of characters which was awesome that's awesome you get in the rolodex yeah exactly yeah pretty much that's it that's awesome yeah, you're in the Rolodex. You've also been very lucky in that a lot of your shots make the final cuts. Because I know you got to be the stormtrooper that gets blasted right when Mando comes out of the bar. Yeah. How cool is that? I will say, though, for everyone that makes it, one oh, does. Of course. So, <laughs> of course. <laughs> but a, a lot of them make it, which is awesome. And the the cool part, too, about my career was the the start of my stunt career – was basically riding off the coattails of of guys that weren't in LA because gotcha. they don't film a lot of movies in LA anymore. Right. It's, you know, Atlanta, New Mexico, mm -hmm. and Europe and all these places that have either tax incentives or bigger studios where they can film film these features. Right. And so a lot of guys that I knew would leave to go work on these big features. And I'd be back in LA, like, oh man, I, I wish I was on a big movie. I, I wish I could, uh, you know, be where those guys are at. But then those guys are out on a movie, and they're so busy, they would just go to another movie, and then they would do reshoots on the previous movie they were on, and they're not right. Available. And where do they do reshoots? Usually in LA, because all the actors live here, the execs live here, whatever. So I got lucky where people would be like, hey, are you available to do the reshoots of this film? And usually for reshoots, it's for something that's going to make the film because they need it. Oh, smart you know? man. So, but I didn't, it wasn't my choice in my head. I was still thinking I was getting like the, the coattails of everyone else. Right. And then the movie would come out and I'd be like, you know, somebody who spent eight months of their life is barely in the movie. 
because maybe right. a bunch of fights even got cut out or maybe they were fight coordinating and they weren't actually on camera very much. Mm. And so even though that person spent eight months of their lives working on a movie, I got to do reshoots for a month or for three weeks. And then a lot of my stuff makes it to the, to the movie. Boom. So I didn't realize how kind of cool that was until yeah. a couple of years later where you, you, know, you start to see the movies come out and you're like, whoa. Because I've spent six months, eight months of my life on movies where I have very little to put in my reel. Sure, sure. And I've gone back to think like, man, I, I worked on this movie for two weeks and I'm in that movie more than that. Yeah. And, you know, so it, it's luck of the draw. And yeah, again, I just, it, it, I got lucky with that. You know, I, I didn't know that that's how that would work. That's so cool. Especially even going back to Deadpool because I, I didn't work on Deadpool as long as those guys in Vancouver sure but, but the mocap stuff i got to do were like trailer moments right which which were the iconic moments of so, course you know that was super rad that's awesome how many so i i've been in the 501st for a lot of years so i've made stormtrooper armor before and uh well the stormtrooper armor is not known to be durable at least the versions that we're wearing so <laughs> how many how your, many sets your versions you are the same bro are they Ooh. Yeah. Or maybe even better. Um, yeah, no. So the stormtrooper suit, it's so funny because the first day you put on the stormtrooper suit, you're like, whoa, I'm a stormtrooper. Awesome. Then giving insight to the my world. Yeah. Is, it's not like, hey, put the stormtrooper suit on. I mean, maybe for a day or two. It's like, hey, put this stormtrooper suit on and walk in and hold a gun. Mm -hmm. It's not that. It's, <laughs> hey, run in and then we're going to pull you on a line into the Ooh. wall. And then you're going to fall and you're in a stormtrooper suit with the plastic. And uh, getting armor bites everywhere. And so it's like uh, you run into two things. One is you're getting beat up because yeah. you, get the, you get the pinches and uh -huh. all that. And then also you're destroying these suits because they're not made yeah. for that. You know, At all. No. <laughs> and so it's like it's, it's a hard battle because you don't want to wreck yourself. You don't want to wreck the suit. Uh, right. You have a whole department of um, wardrobe people who have to go home at the end of the night and fix the suit <laughs> oh, after no. you've broken it. So right. you're trying to stay on good terms with them. And it's funny because as fortunate as it was having that show film in Los Angeles, all the, the previous deals for Star Wars had been in the UK. Right. Um, that first season of Mando, if you broke a Stormtrooper suit, they weren't going to fix it here. They were going to ship it to the uk and have the, the lucas films guys fix it and or replace it and then send it back wow that's a lot of pressure so, so it was a huge process and we were and it was the first time we were like destroying these these yes. <laughs> uh, suits you know yeah and people would be like you know this this suit you're wearing is from this star wars movie and you're like sure wow that's so cool and then you'd break it <laughs> and you're like oh man I, <laughs> what have i done <laughs> it's out of your control you know sure but it, it, it's funny because yeah it's like one of those things you go home at the end of the night you're all bruised you're like oh man but then you go to work you're still you're, you're a stormtrooper and then you watch it and you're a stormtrooper right it's awesome can't beat it can't beat it you know that's so awesome when you're so i first became aware of you uh when the rock posted that clip of you oh, on his instagram yeah. that's when i was like another stunt person i need to follow oh is that was that it that's funny. that's what started it yeah because stunt yeah. people don't get anywhere near the recognition that they should in my opinion that's another reason why i like having stunt people on because i'm like hey you know that thing you like here's the person behind it and right. i thought that was really cool that he posted that and also was like i'm slamming this man into the earth what yeah. <laughs> that was the ground well, it's funny because going back a little bit, the I feel like some some people are are now getting a little bit more recognition again right. with with the internet and Instagram and just people being aware of how films are made now. Yeah, as opposed to the and it's kind of interesting because I've never been one to want the credit, which is why sure. I'm fine doubling actors. Sure. But, I can go home and watch the movie and be like, I did all that cool stuff. Sure. You know, I don't need, I don't need other people. Cause at the end of the day, it's like, you know, your job is to make that actor look cool. So right. go home and that actor looks cool. You did your job. Cool. You know? So I'm cool with that. 
uh, and I feel most people, stunt people should because mm-hmm. that's your job, yeah. unless it's uh, unless it's like something specific where it's you, you know? right? Then you could be like, oh, nah, you know, right? But it's funny when people, in my opinion, when when uh, when actors go on like a talk show and they uh-huh. don't shout out their stunt double, right? Right. A lot of people are like, "What? I did all that," and I'm like, "Yeah, but." why would you expect that guy to tell the world that it wasn't him doing it's a good it? point it's a good and point so there are amazing humans who are fine with it sure but that's one of the reasons why i feel the stunt category and like the oscars isn't there uh, yeah because imagine imagine an actor going up and I love I love actors I love it, but it's just sure. the, the, in terms of the wor- of how it works is like totally an actor going up and taking an award and saying thank you for acknowledging my work, and then a guy who looks just like him going up also getting an award for saying thanks for all the work I did in this <laughs> <movie>. <laughs> sure <laughs> doing all the action. So it's like if the world ended up being like that, that's awesome. Right, I'm for it. But totally. in terms of of movies, is like that's not really what's supposed to happen. Right. So you can't get too upset when somebody doesn't, doesn't say anything. Sure. That's my, uh, my input on it. Sure. Totally. Um, well, I'm going to take that and still put the limelight on you. Cause oh, that's dude, what well, neat. Cause you I deserve do, it. I do friend. appreciate it. Of course. <laughs> of course. Is there, when you're looking back on something, cause you've done some amazing things. Do you have like, moments you think back of like really proud moments or really dangerous stunts that you pulled off you're like that was close yeah both yeah <laughs> both, for sure uh yeah i mean i would say i mean a lot of the stuff we've talked about are some of my proudest for sure sure um, like the rock moment was super cool mm-hmm. you know because you go in as a stunt guy you go to do your job you want to make you want to make a, a cool piece of action for a movie. You know? Right. Like, and, and that's the thing about stunt guys is like a lot of the guys, they're like, I want to be picked up by the rock and slammed down. Cause that's yeah. going to be a movie. And that's <laughs> sure. gonna, what, what everyone talks about. They're not right. going to talk about when he walked in and interrogated some guy for something. Like they're going to talk about the action sequence where the guy got picked up. Right. That's what people talk about in movies, which is why I love being a part of it. Yeah. Because stunt the stunt guy, we're all in we're all the trailer moments. That's what we right. call it. Totally. Right? Like an action movie can't make a trailer without the cool stuff. So yeah, you're always in the trailer, you're the coolest part of the movie. That's what I I believe, you know. Yeah, yeah. But like doing doing something like that where you're doing a doing a ton of stuff, the rock picks you up, he slams you down. I mean, yeah, that uh that wasn't an easy stunt, you know. I bet I, I hit my head on the ground and Ugh. you know, yikes. But, and, and I didn't know someone's filming. I didn't know he's going to post it. I don't right. Know. You're just there working. You're just working. Oh, when he posted it, it was just that much cooler. Because yeah. It's like, oh, wow. He recognized that he picked the guy up and slammed him on the ground as hard as he could. I yeah. <laughs> you and got the, rock, the rock is super cool, and he's known for that. Mm-hmm. You know? But, uh, I mean, that, that's a, that was a super proud moment. Of course, Spider-Man, Deadpool. Um, I can't talk about it much, but one of the proudest ones I have done is the Obi Wan Kenobi series. Yeah, uh, which I worked on all year this year. Amazing. Uh, that was definitely one of the coolest jobs ever because I'm not a diehard Star Wars fan. Sure. But I watched Star Wars growing up, and I watched all the prequels. Of course. And, uh, I had a I had a, an Episode Three poster on the wall. Oh, the best one point. in my opinion. And so. To work on Obi Wan, yeah, and be a part of sort of the, like the original characters of that, sure, was the coolest. And I got to be a part of it from, uh, you know, from scripts to training the actors to developing the action to shooting the action, like all the way through. So it was like, oh, that's more, cool. More rewarding because when you, like for instance, Mandalorian. Right. I wasn't a part of Mandalorian throughout the whole series. You know, that would have right. been a year long job. Sure. I would come in for the action sequences, 
for certain characters work a couple of days here and there. And then the next week, come back a couple of days, but you're not involved in the entire process of shooting. Gotcha. Rips and stuff. So you're, I was, I was super proud of Mando, but in terms of like the rewarding feeling of like reading a script, sure. Imagining it in your head and then being there as they're shooting it throughout the entire thing. Oh, and also so seeing cool. some of the stuff that you're coming up with as a team, make it. Yeah. Into the, into the movie you know wow so that was the coolest to be and that's where i get a lot of pleasure like getting getting a call to go show up for a day on a yeah. show and do you know point a gun say something get shot sure it's, awesome. it's the best can't job beat it. yeah can't beat it but it's not anything you're gonna like hang your hat on and go sure. to sleep and like wow i mean in the beginning for sure you're like yeah oh, I'm not show. <laughs> but it's like it, like anything else you you I mean, I'm sure you're the same way, but you want to be creative. You want to be sure. artistic. You want to be involved, you know? Yeah. Uh, so that's where I get a lot of the like fulfillment, from, fulfillment, right? Yeah. Like being a part of something and having maybe some stuff that you've contributed, make it. Yeah. And just be a part of the process. And those uh -huh. jobs are hard because they're long. Sure. So sometimes you're gone. You're not at home. You're somewhere. In a, you're in the desert somewhere right it's a long job or something but then when it comes out it's like you, you you can watch that movie and be like this was like a year of my life that we put into yeah it, you know i love so that's that the coolest for me i feel like i bet do you have any advice for anyone that like wants to get into stunts these days sure yeah uh i would say there's more opportunities now than there ever was before mm -hmm. because of all of these streaming networks. The amount of content that's being made is so high that yeah. there's so many jobs, right? Mm -hmm. So I think back in the day, it was a little more competitive in terms of getting the job because there weren't as many things being filmed. So like if you lived in LA, there's like only a couple films being filmed in LA. So everyone's fighting to get on them. Right. TV show. Etc. But now there's all these streaming networks and they're pouring all this money into this, that there's so much work. And so I would say that when people, people want to do stunts, just focus on your craft mm -hmm. because what I always tell everybody and what I, what is true is that in everyone that gets into stunts is usually elite at something. Makes sense. Already, you know, uh, because it's whether it's martial arts or acrobatics, it can mm -hmm. be driving, it can be high falls, it can be diving, it can yeah. Be, there's so many uh, different like subsets. So yeah, there's different realms of of stunt work to yeah. the point where like if I got called to do a high fall, there's a limit that I can do, mm -hmm. but then there's some guy who was a probably a professional diver at some yeah. point who's now doing stunts, who's that's going to be the guy that you call to do those stunts. Gotcha. So I would say become the best you can on at, at your, at your craft. And so you can be an asset to, yeah. them, you know, so whether it's martial arts, whether it's, whether it's anything, be awesome at it. And the networking takes time so i'd mm -hmm. say when when people move to la or move to wherever you move mm -hmm. you have to give yourself a buffer of time before you start really getting being hard on yourself before you get work right you have to meet people you know yeah not only do you have to meet people but you have to at some point tell these people and prove to these people that you're amazing at what you do right and in the beginning that's usually just a, a video that you've edited that you've got to send to people or show people or or even if it's getting called to work for free and then performing in front of people where they go, oh, whoa, okay, Brian, yeah. Brian's pretty good at this. Uh, mm -hmm. So maybe on the next thing, we'll repay him for coming in, working for free. And we'll give right. him a on the show. You know, mm -hmm. so you, gotta, you gotta meet people. Um, and I think, yeah, just be, be genuine at what you, genuine to who you are, become mm -hmm. the best you can at what you do so you can contribute. And then you gotta just meet people. Um, and the hardest part of that 
is doing it. So yeah. <laughs> got to move somewhere or you got to put the time in where that industry is, you know? Yeah. So if it's, if it's Atlanta, that's, there's a, there's a hub there. If it's LA, there's a hub here, but you got to go. You know? Yep. And yep. that's the thing too, is when, it, when people hit me up uh, and I'm not in a position where I can help out a lot of people. Cause I'm still getting the jobs. I'm not running the jobs. Sure. Sometimes I'm a part of it, but sometimes I'm not. So I can put in good words for people. I can pass things along. I can give advice to people. I can put people's names in when I'm on something, you know, mm -hmm. so that's the, that's the power that I have. Sure. Uh, but when people hit me up and they go, Hey, I I'm thinking about moving to LA or I'm thinking about doing this and I'm thinking about getting to stone work and this is this, if they're, if they're pretty proficient in what they do, like if they're already a martial artist, a competitive martial artist or a trick or something, I go, okay, cool. Well, let me know when you're here. Right. Right. Because you can't do it at home. Yeah. Makes sense. You know, uh, you can network as much as you can, but until someone's here, I can't be like, Hey, use this guy for a previs until they're down the street, you know, available. Right. To do right. So you you gotta have to make, make yourself available. You gotta, you gotta like, make the uh yeah you gotta make the jump that scary yeah. move across the country or move to another state mm -hmm. you know that's this that's the scary part but that's what that's what you got to do it makes sense it makes sense you can't go to work if you're not at the place to work yeah, you got to be there you got to meet people and uh but the most important is be good yeah 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 <laughs> got to be good and, and be willing to learn you know because yeah. Uh, a lot of people are elite at what they do, but they might have like a, a tunnel vision of what they have uh -huh. or, or what they're good at. But in terms of making a movie, there's so much that goes on, especially with stunts where like, you know, if you're an amazing martial artist and an amazing acrobat, there'll be times where you're not on a wire, but in the world of stunts, if you're that guy that's performing, you're also going to be on a wire you know right be an explosion in front of you at some point because you're the superhero and then mm -hmm. you're going to go flying somewhere and they're going to you're going to be on a wire and you got to know how that equipment works sure how, what's the knot what's the knot that that guy's using what what's the system that it's on what's the is there someone pulling my line is it attached to a ratchet a, a you know an, an air an air canister that's going to send you like you got to know how everything works and you got to learn how everything works yeah like you said know your craft yeah you gotta know your craft and you gotta learn everyone else's craft <laughs> yeah yeah and the more you know the bigger asset you can be yeah for sure because that. that's the thing too especially on these movies you you know if if someone's bringing you along for for the ride of the movie for the run of the film mm -hmm. from start to finish they're only going to bring people that are going to be be assets yep you know, if, if you're, if you're a one trick pony, which is what they call it, where like, you can only do one thing. Well, mm -hmm. you will work, but you won't be the guy. You makes know, you sense. Gotta, gotta be good and, and, and able to work with everyone else. Yeah. Like with the rigging team, with the effects team, you know, a lot of, a lot of the stunt guys now they shoot and edit previs and they do their own visual effects. Cool. So now you're working with the visual, visual effects team of the film and the world right. from there, you know, I love it. Be as useful as possible. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I always love practical advice. That's I'm the in motto. and do real, real, real advice. But I will say all that being said, follow your dreams, make the move. Yeah. I will don't, say that. Don't give up. Don't give up. I mean, sitting at home, imagining what it would be like if you were somewhere, you can do it all day, but until you go, that's yeah. Right. yeah. But make sure you're good. <laughs> but, but make sure you're good at something. Yeah. You know? um, and, and, and that's also the hard reality of it too, where, you know, when you, when people, are, how, how do I get into stunts? I go, okay, well, what do you, what can you contribute to a film? Yeah. hundred percent game or something, you know? And sometimes it's hard. They go, well, I, I did karate when I was six. I'm like, well, you got to do karate today. So you have to. Yeah. And, and sometimes it's not just going to be karate. It's like, you got to be good at, at something. So it's devoting a lot of time. You know, if, if, if you want to be in the role of stunts doing fights, then you got to train martial arts every day. You got to train how to fall, how to wreck. Yeah. You know, safely. Cause you're not just falling on a Monday 
and then you're off work Tuesday. You're yeah. also going to work Tuesday <laughs> to fall again. Yeah. So you've got to know the correct way to do things. And there's there's bumps and bruises, but there is a technique to everything to be yeah. um, to be in, in the longevity of the of the film, you know. Sure. Or or in a career from that. Yeah. You it's know, important. So, so much. But just be I, I you know, you gotta be an open book and, and go for it. Learn. Yeah. Be humble. Be willing to learn. Yeah. All great advice. I love yeah. me some practical advice, Ross. I mean, that, that's what I got for the, for the people. <laughs> I'm into it. And dude, we've been talking for an hour and a half now. You survived. Love it. Love it. Hey, man. I, dude. We, could it. we could go all day. This was a blast. Yeah, thanks, Brian. No, dude, I... Like, you're a joy to hang with. Cool to reflect, too, you know? Yeah, of course. Sometimes you're in it. Your tunnel vision. Uh-huh. Especially out here, a lot of guys, you know? You're on a job, you finish that job, and then you're like, okay, what is the next, what's the next thing? Am I ever right? Gonna, you know, what's, you know? That's uh, right. I feel like everyone sort of shares that. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, you got to take the time to be like, well, wait, it's we true. did a cool thing. We gotta, That's the joy I get. I get to show you the threads of your life and be like, that was pretty cool, huh? It is pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> but dude, this was fantastic. I really appreciate you taking the time to hang out. But before sure. I let you go into the wild, where can people find you online? Where can they see your cool stuff? Talk okay. Uh, my social media game has fallen because I've been so busy. Understandable. But, uh, my full name, uh, Ross Constam on Instagram. If anyone wants to see Instagram stuff, um, IMDb, my full name. Um, I have a Facebook. If people want to message me and have any questions or anything, mm -hmm. I will try my best to, to get back to you. Uh, yeah. I think that's it. I don't know what else. That's that's gotta be it, right? Kind of, that's kind of the case, <laughs> they right? can find you. Yeah. You're findable on the internet. Findable, yeah. If you type my name in on Google, you'll find something. Same so, thing on Instagram if you have a question or something. But uh watch the podcast first. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fall into the line. That's uh, right. But yeah. I love it. I that's love it. Time. Thank you so much. Thanks, Brian. I appreciate it, dude. Thanks for uh for having me. I'm humbled. Anytime. And Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at BrianBalance.com. There you'll find all my demos and a bunch of other fun stuff. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps and is greatly appreciated. Let the people know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch! Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get you some sweet gear. Also, I've got a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show more directly, you now have that option over at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Xavier, and Victor. Your support means so, so much, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.